So as you guys can tell, I dyed my hair and I absolutely love it. It's actually not finished, but I already love the product. And also, I'm sick. I can't breathe through my nose. can't breathe through my mouth, really. So bear with me. Um, I will be filming two to three videos today. And so for two to three videos, you guys get to hear me sound like a stopped up psychopath. <laughs> but, um, so the first thing I want to talk about, and... Before making this video, I have announced this to most of my family. Um, I actually haven't talked to Adam's family yet, and that's just because I haven't seen them face to face since I found out, and it's not something that I really feel comfortable telling people over the phone. I did have to tell Adam over the phone. The original plan was to wait till he got home, but I just couldn't keep it from him. I feel like it was a very life-changing thing, and no, I'm not pregnant, guys. Um, this video is actually going to be a little bit different. It's kind of more of a serious and um a little bit saddening of a tone so i went to the doctor i think i mentioned before i have very loose joints and i was just told i was past quadruple jointed a couple years ago and you know that's what it was left at and um, i went to the doctor to do a checkup on my hips and my shoulder because they had been really hurting and i was diagnosed with something called ehlers danlos syndrome and it was very, um, I have hair dye on my face, but it was very uh, shocking at first. I didn't know what it was. I didn't really know anything about it. <clears throat> and so after the doctor's appointment, I was going out to eat with my mom and the baby. And I just kind of sat the whole time we were eating and just researched and researched and tried to find out what I could. And I felt like there was just nothing out there. Like there wasn't a lot of studies. It was just a lot of different people that have it talking about how much pain they're in and how their pain accelerates. And it's one story about this girl and she broke her neck and she didn't realize she broke it at first. And then after finding out, the doctor didn't know much about EDS and didn't treat it properly. And then she went in a couple of like weeks ago for a life-threatening surgery after having a broken neck for a year. And I feel like... It was this very negative connotation when I started researching stuff. And it was just like left and right, something else was bad. And I kind of just didn't want to have it. Um, I should not have put mascara on it, but very little because I knew I'd end up crying. You know, I was... A lot of people with EDS are referred to as being zebras in the medical community. and Um... I remember, like, there were moments when I was like, okay, if I gotta be a zebra, I'm gonna be a rainbow striped zebra. I'm part of this community, and we get to join in the paint together, and, you know, we lean on each other, and there's other people that feel the things that I feel, but then I realized, like, when I had problems with my joints, I never thought, like, that it could be, like, this bad, or that it could get to that point, and the tree's kind of, like, given some, like, shadowing but I never thought that it would accelerate I just thought you know I have problems with my joints and that's it you know they're there they're going to be there and they are what they are but to be told like you have something wrong with you so now I kind of want to talk about what EDS is so Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a connective tissue disorder or disease I don't really know what would be better to use for that I wouldn't really call it a di I don't know it's one or the other it's called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome so it's syndrome but it affects your connective tissue and your connective tissue is pretty much everything that makes up your body that isn't bone and hair um you have skin muscles ligaments joints you know all this stuff and um I am going to see a clinic to see what treatment options I have I can't explain it the best to you guys, but uh, mainly because there's not a lot of explanation. The main p form of EDS is hypermobility, and as of right now, they know I have hypermobility. They don't know if I have bits and pieces of other parts of it as well, just because of my medical history. But um, they do know that it affects my heart. is that that just scared the pee out of me guys you come with me and see what the heck just broke down my door 
was UPS with a package. It's just, it's just banged on that door louder than anything in the world. I literally think I just peed my pants. I'm wearing shorts, but you know, I think it just had a heart attack. to filming after that minor heart attack from the UPS people. So I honestly feel like it's a culture shock, you know. Someone posted, and it was a blog post about it, and it was like, when you find out, you kind of grieve. You know, you grieve what you thought your life was going to be. So, as I get older, my joints are going to get more loose. Um, things are going to get harder to do. I'm going to be in more pain than I already am on a daily basis. Uh, it is genetic. This is when I start crying. So, um, sometimes people just get it, but once you have it, you pretty much always pass it to your kids. And so, when Raylan's a little bit older, she'll have to be tested. But, uh, she does have some indications already that she could have it. Um, she does tend to be pretty flexible. She'll stretch her legs really high. She likes to do that already at such a young age. She likes to stretch around. and um, I hope she's just flexible. Um, the pain that I have already had is bad. Um, I just recently went to the doctor, had the MRI and everything in my foot because I bruised my bone really badly just from walking. I literally stepped from the curb to the grass about this much of a height difference and bruised my bone. I didn't twist it, I didn't fall, none of that. It just, it is what it is. Yes. And um, I've broken many bones, ripped things, torn things, stretched things, pulled things. And I just feel like to know that that's going to get worse. Sorry, my dogs just broke out of the kitchen. To know that that's going to get worse and that there's nothing I can really do to stop it is very... Oh my goodness. I love you guys. They're like, Mommy, don't cry. Mommy, don't cry. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. The Christmas tree is right there. Be careful. To know that it's going to get worse is really hard for me. To know that the pain I feel is going to get worse is really hard for me. And I think that, Annie, I think that every day is going to be a new struggle. And every day is going to be a new journey. And I kind of go back and forth between accepting that I have it and wishing that I could unhave it, I guess. <laughs> Um, you know, I see posts, uh, I joined a couple of group support pages on Facebook, and uh, I see these posts and all these pain that people are in that have, like, grown over the years through this pain, and it terrifies me. It is really, really hard to think that I have something that could take away dreams that I never imagine would be stopped um you guys know we want a lot of kids and when you're pregnant your stomach has to hold that baby and i can still get pregnant fertility wise um i know some infertility problems but fertility wise i can still get pregnant um and right now, physically, I could handle another pregnancy, uh, but I already have a really bad um, <coughs> muscle separation in my stomach. Sorry, guys, I had to pause. Puppy had to go potty, but <clears throat> I can't even say where I left off because my head's so like. When it comes to talking about this, but honestly, I just. I've had a rough time adjusting knowing all of this. Um, I've had a rough time knowing that there isn't a cure. Um, right now I'm not, there are a couple of experimental trial treatments, but I'm not a candidate for any of them right now. Um, just because what number I am on a scale of hypermobility. 
my jaw the other day dislocated on this side and was dislocated for two days before I could get it to go back in and I honestly think that that's like the hardest thing to know that that's just gonna get worse everything is just gonna get worse but I also know that you know there are some treatments and treatment options that I have and I am grateful that even though I have it there are other people that have it that I can connect with and there is a community that I am a part of now that can understand the pain I'm in and help me understand the pain I'm in. Um, it is a rare syndrome disease to have. I've read every research chart done about it and there are so few and that makes it so hard for me because I like to research. I like to know what I'm up against. I remember telling Adam I was so scared. I didn't know what he was going to think. What he would think of me. And I just felt so broken. And so messed up. Because I had something that was going to make me fall apart basically. And the love and support and positive attitude that he had made it so much easier for me to tell him and made me realize why I love him as much as I do and I could never ever have imagined that I had this um, but there are so many indentation signs that I do um, so many signs that so many doctors missed. So many things that it would have helped to know sooner. Things with my pregnancy with her, reasons why my heart acted up so bad when I was pregnant, reasons why I had seizures when I was pregnant. You know, everything that's happened in my life medically is now explained by this disease that everyone overlooked. And um, that's where the zebras come from. You know, we stomp and we might like sound like horses, but internally we're not um, different. And you know, you can't see what's happening, you can't see the pain I'm in, you can't see what's causing the pain I'm in. And that's another thing. You know, people believe in things because they want to, because they're good, because they trust them. I'm being forced to believe in something that I don't want to believe in, that I can't see. And that's made me have issues accepting it, I think. I am getting a tattoo to represent my EDS, to help me cope with my EDS, and um, I am due to see a clinic about like treatment options in June of 2018. Um, that's the next time that I could get to see them, <laughs> but right now it's just a lot of thinking about it, breathing, accepting it, trying to learn what I can. And so if you guys see changes in my lifestyle, I am definitely trying to make some. I think it's really hard. I still want to do everything that I did before because I feel like what has really changed, like although yes, I've been told that I have this, I don't know how to change my life. You know, I'm not supposed to be lifting certain weights. I'm not supposed to be exercising. I'm not supposed to be working out. And so adjusting my lifestyle, I've always lifted heavy things. I've always been that person that it's like, oh, I can do this. I've been physically in good health and strength as far as I knew. And to know that I have to stop and slow down some, I mean, I guess most people would think like that's comforting. I get to not do as much, but I actually really enjoy being able to lift things. I enjoy doing certain like physically challenging obstacles and to know I can't do that stuff is really hard for me. I was actually talking to people in that line at Black Friday at Target. They were telling me about this obstacle course for husband and wife. And depending on how, like, some of them I'm still going to do while I can do it and whether that's a bad attitude or not, it's my choice. Um, if I can physically do it right now, I want to do it before I can't do it anymore. But um, the one they were talking about, there was no way physically that I could do it. And to know that, like, and 
they were recommending it for me and Adam to do and I just what were they supposed to say like no I can't I have this debilitating disease I couldn't say that because no one can see it and I didn't want to explain it and I mean I go through moments when I kind of feel really like alone because although like I have this online support group I don't personally know those people and I haven't made any personal friendships with people that have EDS so far. Um, I recently found out that a friend of mine's sister's friend has it. And uh, I'm not really going to go into details about that. But I think that it's definitely hard, guys. Um, I will update you guys as I emotionally and physically progress through it. So if you guys see changes in my attitude, I don't want you to think that I'm depressed or that something else is going on. It's just, I just got diagnosed with something that I'm having, or I'm just coping with, basically. You know, I am coping and grieving and dealing with it. And I also have a lot of other stressors in my life right now. Mainly just Adam not being home yet is really, really hard. You know, we almost to Christmas almost the baby's birthday when I'm filming this is actually she's 11 months old today um, I have to film her 11 month update and <sighs> it's just a little bit stressful to not have him home and plus finding all of this out and having to tell him over the phone was really hard for me so I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, I'm being very transparent by telling you guys this and if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comments, or I do have an email that I always leave in the description that is just my regular email for this channel that you guys are more than welcome to email me at, um, you can message me on here. Reach out. If you have EDS, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you. Um, I've known I have it for about a month now, and um, it's been a long month. So, I love you guys. Make sure to comment, subscribe, like this video, turn on your notification bell so you know when I post something new, and I will see you guys later.